Hello, everybody, and welcome to a series I honestly have no idea how it's going to do, and that is Mountain Blade Warband. It's funny because probably over the past year, on and off, I occasionally got a comment that wanted to see me play Mountain Blade Warband, and I never really paid it much heed because I really not I really knew nothing about the game. Um, you know, fast forward to the Steam Summer Sale. Game's on sale for like three or four bucks. I end up picking it up because there are people saying it's really good. And all the Steam reviews have people playing thousands of hours. And it's just like super positive reviews. And I casually mention that maybe I'll check out the game and do a series on it if I like it enough. People basically lost their shit and were super excited. So I played for about 30 minutes just to kind of understand the general concept of the game. And then I watched a couple of videos and honestly, the what I get is that it's like a Crusader Kings 2 meets Total War kind of game, almost. It's like this simulation RPG strategy game. It looks really weird. Um, also on Twitter, basically everybody told me to download the Floris mod. The Floris mod apparently just takes the vanilla game, expands it, improves it, and makes the game look a little bit better. Though the, I will say the game is effing ugly. But it lends itself well to telling your own story and kind of enjoying your own, I guess, life through this game. Um, so, again, I don't know how well this series is going to do. I don't know how well it's going to go over. So, I also don't know if that means the game is going to stick around on the channel for very long. So, we'll see. Um, it seems interesting. Interesting enough for me to check it out for longer than I have and maybe do a few episodes on it just to see what happens. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Um, it's an interesting start because it really doesn't tell me much. So basically, I hear about this land of Colradia, uh, a land torn between rival sovereignties battling each other for supremacy, a haven for knights and mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, and glory. In this land which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that finally, you hold the key of your destiny in your hands, free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures await you. So I'm coming to this land for a treasure reason. So now, we have to pick our like story, essentially. So I'm a male or female. I'm obviously a male. Um, my father was one of uh, many different things. I have no idea. Let's say he was a veteran warrior. You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was a veteran warrior. As a child, your family scrabbled out a meager living from your father's wages as a guardsman to the local lord. It was not an easy existence, and you were too poor to get much of an education. You learned mainly how to defend yourself on the streets with or without a weapon in your hand. All right, so that's good. What else could he be? An impoverished noble. You came into the world of sun declining... Uh, world a son of a de of declining nobility owning only the house in which they lived however despite your family's hardships they afforded you a good education and trained you uh, from childhood for the rigors of aristocracy and life at the court sure sounds good i spent my early life as that's a mummer you learned uh you world blah, blah blah you spent early life as a mummer as a boy growing out of childhood you attach yourself to the troop of wandering entertainers nope boring um a street urchin uh, a boy growing out of childhood who took the streets, doing whatever you could to survive. So suddenly went from a noble to a street urchin. That's a terrible life for us, but that's, that's fine. My father was once a noble. We declined ever, and I eventually had to, you know, live on the streets to survive. And later I became, uh, so many things. Um, I became a mercenary. Then, as a young adult, life changed as it always does. You became a mercenary. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way, you had become a man. And the world, uh, the whole world seemed to change around you. You signed on with the mercenary company and traveled far from your home. The life you found was rough and ready, marching to the beat of strange drums and leaning, uh, learning unusual ways of fighting. There were men who taught you how to wield any weapon you desired and plenty of battles to hone your skills. You are one of the charmed few who survived through every uh, campaign in which you marched. Sounds good. This is a reason for my adventure. Um, being forced out of your home. Lust for money and power. Sure. Lust for money and power. But soon everything changed and you decided to strike out on your own. Uh, as an adventurer, made you take this decision was the lust for money and power. Only you knew exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. To everyone else, it's clear that you're now motivated solely personal gain. As a nobleman, you find that you are able to take your place among Colradia's greatest lords. So basically... Uh, I, I assume that means my stats. I basically became a very straight across kind of guy. I'm good at pretty much everything. 
or I'm okay. A jack of all trades, master of none. Sounds good to me. So these are some mod choices. I honestly don't know. We'll go ahead and just leave it as expanded and leave it as that. Um, I don't know what these do. These do. I assume I can assume what that does. But I'm not going to mess with it too much because it's my first playthrough. All right, that's my character who was once a noble. Became so poor he had to live on the streets, eventually took up the mercenary life, and then just started lust for money and power. Pretty basic story. We're going to do realistic, basically Iron Man mode. And now we have to distribute our skills, which I did uh, yesterday. So we have four points over here. Uh, strength, every point adds plus one to my hit points. Um, sure. We'll do some strength, and we'll do charisma. Sounds good. Uh, now we're going to put some skill points in. So we're going to be melee focused, it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and do power strike. Leadership. Going to max max that out. Leadership allows us to have more followers. Um, spotting. Parties seeing range is increased by 10% per level. Okay. Weird. Weapon master makes it easier to learn weapons. Sure. Let's go ahead and do... Oh, we want shield, actually. And then we'll do weapon master. And we can do power draw as well for bows. Each point to the skill increases your hit points by two. So also do go ahead and do that. Iron flesh. Uh, we're good at one-handed weapons, so we'll put that up to 75. And we'll go ahead and do some archery. Perfect. So there's our character, Mathis Gameson. He's level 1, he has 49 hit points, and uh, he leads a bizarre life. So let's continue onward. Adjust your character's face. Oh, right, we have to... Ooh, that's horrifying. Like I said, this game is not exactly the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, yes, that looks good. I'm a young man. Brown hair. Excellent. I'm already done. Look at that. Perfect. You came by a caravan through the heartland of Colradia. Green shoots of wheat, barley, and oats are beginning to push through the dark soil of the rolling hills. And on the lower slopes of the snow-capped mountains, herds of cattle and sheep are grazing on the spring grass. Occasionally, too, you catch sight of one of the great war horses that are the pride of the Swadian nobility. The land here is rich, but also troubled, as the occasional burnt-out farm bears witness. You keep a wide berth of the forest where uh, desperate men have taken refuge, and it is some relief when you crest a, a, crest a ridge and catch sight of the great port of Praven, its rooftops made golden by the last rays of the setting sun. You are exhausted by the time you find the inn uh, in Praven and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore the surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs of your neck on end, the rasp of a blade sliding from the scabbard. So we're getting attacked. In, in the streets of this town, we're about to get our asses whooped, apparently. So, okay. Uh, we have a throwing knife. Uh, how do I change weapons? There we go. Nope, I don't. All right. There we go. Where's this guy? Oh, there he is. Excuse me, sir. I would prefer if you did not throw arrows at me. Okay, well, that didn't work. Oh, and my, my controller's plugged in, so I'm getting a lot of... Hang on. I gotta put the controller on the ground. It's vibrating on my table and... Kind of bothering me. Alright, let's try that again. Done. Excuse me, sir. I would prefer... Am I not swinging at you? I can't tell if I'm actually doing anything. Oh, there's my sword. That's what I wanted. Ah, oh, that's what I needed. Oh, the combat in this game is so good. All right, we got a nice stab in. Excuse me. Ugh. No, I would prefer if you didn't attack me. You're, how, how did you survive that? Ah, oh, we cut through each other. Aha! Bandit. Down, bandit. I did it, guys. Oh, there's somebody else coming. Oh, wait. I think this is the guy who gives me my first quest. I died the first time I played this, this, this game because I was using a uh, playing an archer. Ulrich, are you all right? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can say the same for the other fellow, though. That's one less thief to trouble our streets at night. Although Haven knows, heaven knows, he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me out with something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. The merchant takes you to his house. Once inside, he stands by the door for a while, checking the street, and then finally, convinced you have not been followed, comes near to near you to speak. Okay. Hello, Ulrich. How's things, buddy? What you got in your house, pal? And some red cloth, kind of bizarre. Hi, how are you? Now, let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigands in the hills, driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. 
Recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us it's because of all the fighting on the frontiers, fewer men to keep an eye on the streets, etc., etc. But I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems to me that the most logical explanation is that these bandits have an ally inside the walls who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week, you see, they took my brother. I don't know what my brother was thinking, a lad from a prominent house, out alone after dark in times like these. Well, I suppose you two were, you were too, but you're a stranger here and didn't know how bad things had become. He had no ex such excuse, but he's family, so what can you do? If you don't protect your kin, then people will start thinking that you can't protect your investments either, and I can't have that. No doubt the gang will soon send word about a ransom, but I don't care to pay it. So here's my proposition. You look f like you've had a bit of experience with the blade, and more importantly, you must have had a bit of fire in your belly, or you wouldn't be coming to Calradia to see seek for your fortune. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Gather a small party, track down these bandits to their lair, teach them a lesson they won't forget, and get my brother back safe. In return, you'll earn my lasting gratitude and a bit of silver. What do you say? Uh, yeah, sure, I'm interested. You won't be able to do this by yourself, though. If you try to take on the whole gang single-handedly, the hunter will become the hunted, I'll warrant. You'll first want to round up a group of volunteers. There's always a few lads in the villages around here looking for a bit of work that's more interesting than tilling the soil or hauling water. They'll follow you if you pay, so take this purse of 100 dinars, consider it an advancement on your reward. Go around to check the villages and use the money to hire some help. I'll reckon that you need at least five men to take on these bandits. Very good, sir. I'll go collect some of the men around the villages. Oh, that's me. Whoa, that is a hat, pal. Good, you can find me again at the tavern here, Praven, when you've gathered your group. We'll speak what to do next. So... Uh, looks like we're gonna have to go out and collect men. So that's pretty simple. I've done that before. We can hit tab and just leave. So, uh, by leaving, we now have to go around. So this is like the overview map. From what I understand, it kind of just works on a almost a turn-based system. Time does not pass unless I am moving. I can make time pass by holding space. You are now viewing the overland map, basically. Um, and I can click around to, to direct them. So I'm gonna go to Osgod and see if there's anybody there worth moving around. Whoa! I have been awarded the right to carry a banner. Your banner will signify your status and bring you honor. Which banner? Why? Why am I... That didn't happen last time. Okay. I go pick something cool. What do I want? Carrying around a banner already. Kind of bizarre. This is a cool one. But I want something simple and stark. Yeah, that one right there. So I'm carrying a banner. So as we play, you can kind of see people running around and they're doing their own thing. From what I understand, this world is being simulated, and it kind of does its own thing with or without you. Wars start to begin and end without you. Alliances begin and end without you. And it's up to you, if you want, to kind of make a dent on this world and have your own goals. Whether it become a king or a vassal of a king, etc., etc. So we're going to go to Osgod and recruit some volunteers. Well, that sucks. Nobody wishes to join me. Okay, let's go to Veridar then. And try to avoid being attacked. Bandits can roam the land, so I hope I don't get killed. We could set up camp and read reports if we wanted to. I'm going to return to the world for now, though. I'm not going to worry about that. Excuse me. Uh, it looks like one Swadian peasant offers to follow you. Sure. I need five. We could take a hostile action. I don't know what that'll do. Is there another village that's close? Let's go over here. So I have one. We have a, a total army of two right now. Me and that one guy. Weekly budget. I'm losing money. Not surprising, I have men. Okay. Recruit volunteers. Four of them, that's gonna be five total. That's what we need, right? So we go back to Praven. See if, uh, what the next step is. Who's this? Looters. I don't know what looters are, I don't know what they do. They don't seem to be aggressive. Our current force morale is 93, which is good. More looters kind of running around. Uh, let's see. The town of Praven seems to be flourishing. The people look well-fed and relatively content. This is different. I've never seen this before. Craftsmen do a thriving business, and some migrants appear to be coming here from other regions to seek their luck. You see the banner of the of King Haralus of Kingdom of Swadia over the town gates. The populace is indifferent to you. The Lord is currently holding a feast in his hall. A tournament will be held here soon. Well, we could go join the tournament or join the castle, but we have stuff to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and visit the tavern. We have other things, better things to do. Where's Ulrich? There he is. Ulrich! I will hunt for the bandits. Splendid work. You have hired enough men to take on the bandits. Now, traveler, travelers entering Praven have told us that there's a small group of robbers lurking in the outside of the town. I expect that they are full. Uh, they are from the same band. So, we're going to hunt down the bandits. 
We'll go ahead and scroll down and leave. They should be pretty close. During the, your day's travel, you come across a lone warrior traveling towards Uxkal. From him, you learn that there will be a tournament held in the by in the town by Duke Delinard. All right, I'm looking for these bandits. I think I see them. That's them right there. Band of robbers. So now we gotta chase them. I've been looking for you. Tell me where you keep the prisoners, and I'll let you go. Ha! Those prisoners are only going free if you pay the ransom. Did you bring any silver? No, but I brought steel. So I can send my army in without me. Um, I can charge the enemy, or we could just leave. Or change the commander. I'm gonna charge the enemy, obviously. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how to get off- Oh! I don't know how to get off my horse. I have no friggin' idea how to get off my horse. Let's take out this. Um, it seems the horse controls are kind of bizarre. I don't know how to get off the horse, guys. No, I don't want to drop the sword! No! That's not what I wanted to do! Guys, how do I... Controls? Is it like a dismount? Drop weapon. That was good, Mathis. Come on, where's the dismount button? Space, maybe? Send message to team, character window. Oh, God. Nope. Well, looks like we're going in with a, a joust. Eh. We're going up this hill. All right, my, my men are eager to attack. They're very excited, as you can see. I pay them well to do this. Aha, here they are. Charge, men. Charge. We'll prepare a jousting attack here. Don't you dare. Yeah! Ah! Uh, speed bonus plus 82% damage. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. How are they taking... How are they, like, surviving that? Uh, they shouldn't be lasting much longer, to be honest. I'm just gonna stab him to death. Swadian peasant was killed by a robber. We lost somebody. Oh, wait. I just had a dismount pop up. Yes! Dead. That's right. Hooray! We did it. I need to pick up, uh, like a sword or something. Give me this. Or the Reeve sword. I'll take it. It's better than nothing. Alright, so we got it. We can press tab to leave now. Yeah, we did it. So, our casualties. We lost somebody. Um, but we killed everybody and we wounded one. Continue. I spare me. Spare my life. Let me go. I'll go as far away from here and learn an honest trade and you'll never hear from me again. I'll spare your life, but in exchange, I want information. Either you or your mates kidnap the brother of a prominent merchant in town. Tell me where you're hiding him, and give me your word that you'll stop troubling the people of these parts so you can go free. Oh, bless you, sir. Bless you. We've done the lad no harm. We've been keeping him in our hideout near Vidar. I'll describe the area nearby in detail so there's no mistaking it. And now we get to loot the hell out of this area. So let's go ahead and take, I guess, some stuff. We already have fruit. Um... We already are wearing armor and everything, though there is some better armor, so let's go ahead and put this one on. Uh, there's also a helmet. This is giving me, what, plus 8 head armor. This is plus 6, but times 0.5. I'm going to take get rid of that. Well, well, we'll take some and sell some of this stuff. I assume we can sell. I think this is a working econ economy in this game, if I remember correctly. We'll take. We'll just take basically everything that looks like it's useful. Plus 1 leg armor, plus 4 leg armor. Let's go ahead and put that on. See, look at that. Robbers give us great stuff. Basically just taking the tunics and, like, whatever these are considered weapons, I guess. Sandals? Nah. Alright, we'll take all that. Sounds good. Got 38 dinars from that. Now we just go into... Click on all this. So we got two things. Attack the bandit lair. The find the bandit lair near Vidar and free the brothers of the Ulrich. Alright, so that's what we're doing next. We need more... We're down a man, though, unfortunately. But there's the kidnapper's hideout. Let's see if Vidar has what we need. I want to see if we can get some more men. Go to the village center. Doesn't look like we can recruit anybody. So let's just leave and see if we can go to the kidnapper's hideout then. Excuse me. All right. The looters don't appear to have spotted you yet, and you can still sneak away unnoticed. The difficult approach to the site, down a narrow defile, 
means that only a handful of troops in your party will be able to join you with the attack, and they will be unable to bring their horses. If your initial attack fails, the looters will easily be able to make their escape and disperse. Do you wish to attack? Yeah, let's attack the hideout. I did this before, and I waited an entire day, and nothing happened. I couldn't actually do anything. So let's just attack now. So me and my four men, my four compadres, will attack at night. You know, we'll have some throwing knives to start. It's really hard to see, so I can only imagine it's really dark for you guys. They're throwing stuff already, though. Where? Ah, there it is. Whoa, buddy. Looter killed by Swati and Peasant. Alright, let's just go up there with a sword. Alright, come on, pal. Alright, you guys are just gonna gang bang him, so I'm gonna let that go. Oh, hey, buddy. Come on. I like how these, these robbers have, like, a sickle. And that's all they've got. Okay, well. Can I hold, like, a charge attack? I can. Alright. Continue, men. Lead the way. This is what I pay you for. Alright. Ah, there's one. Good throw, Mathis. Good throw. That's what I, uh, trained for all those lives as a noble. Well, he's dead. These guys are just fighting straight up. Oh, we lost one! Can I not? Yeah. Ah, oh, nice! This is, uh, just hit him with a freaking throwing knife and dead. There's a lot of freaking robbers around here. Luckily, they're kind of scattered to the point where attacking them is not too shabby. Let's go ahead and throw that. I can't even see if I'm hitting. He better be the last one. I wish there was a way to sprint. I don't think there is. What is he backing up for? Don't be a pansy. Are you guys going to like, high-five in each other over there? Alright, let's just go ahead and take our sword out. It's like, they're just holding up their weapons, like, waiting. Yeah! In the back. Woo! We did it! I think we did it, guys. You cannot leave now. Why? Oh, who's this guy? You guys are cheering a little early. Oh, wait, no, this is the merchant's guy. Thank you, thank you, sir, for rescuing me from those fiends. Did my brother and Praven send you... Praven put you onto that track? Yes, I told him I would find you. I advise you to return to your family as quickly as you can, and be careful on the road. With their retreat cut off, the looters fall one by one to your determined attack. Their hideout and their ill-gotten gains are now yours. So we get all their shit, which is awesome. So our sword is what? We can swing thrust. Not nearly as, uh... Whoa, what's this? Rusty Sarenid sword? I don't know what this means. Speed rating, weapon rating. This is slightly better. So let's go ahead and take it. Uh, we're going to take all the food. Because I, I think our men, if I remember correctly from playing for like the 30 minutes that I did before. Our men basically just eat the food that we have over time. So like bushels of fruit and all that good stuff. We can sell all this too. I don't know if it goes bad. Probably does. Man, they have so much shit. That's everything. We're full. Sounds good to me. So let's go back to Praven and uh, hand in this quest. And this will be as far as I've played before um, in the other in the other game that I had. Village farmers, they're just kind of traveling. See, like the guys kind of go back and forth. So let's go ahead and visit the tavern. Yurik, I did what you wanted, buddy. Well, my brother is home safe. I'm not sure what to do with it with him yet. Maybe pack him off to a university outside Colorado. That way, if he gets knocked on the head in the street brawl, no one can say it's my fault. But that's not your problem. Here's the rest of your reward. It was well earned. The money is most welcome, and I am glad to have been of service. Good. Now you are interested in making some more? Possibly. What do you need? Remember how I told you that the bandits had an ally inside the walls? I think I know who it is. The captain of the watch, no less. Some months ago, this captain, seeing the amount of profit we merchants were making from the trade across the frontiers, decided to borrow some money to the sponsor a caravan. Unfortunately, like many who are new to the co to commerce, he failed to realize that great profit only comes with great risk. So he sank all his money into the most expensive commodities, and of course his caravan was captured and looted, and he lost everything. 
As a consequence, it seems our captain turned to villainy to recruit his loss. Uh, I suppose I'd do the same if, if the heavens forbid I ever faced indebtedness and ruination. Now, any watch captain worth his salary will have a few thieves and robbers on his payroll to inform on the rest of, uh, but our captain decides to employ these band bastards wholesale. He brings them into the town, lets them do as they will, and takes a share of their take. You've heard of poachers turning gameskeepers? Well, in the unfortunate land of Colradia, sometimes gamekeep gamekeepers will turn poacher. Luckily, there's still a few, uh, brave, honest souls in the watch who have told me how he works. Now, here's my plan. I could bring this to the attention of King Har Harlow's Lord of the City, but that would mean an in inquiry, my word against the captains, and witness can be brought and evidence and destroyed. Or maybe the whole thing will be forgotten if the enemy comes across the border again and all I'll get from my trouble is a knife in the ribs. In time of war, you see, a king's eye wanders far from his domain and a subject suffers. So I've got another idea. I've got a small group of townsfolk together, some men in my um, employ, and some others who've lost their relatives to these bandits, and we'll storm the captain's home and bring him chains before King Harlarl. Hopefully with a few captured bandits to explain how things stack up. All I need now is someone to lead my little army into battle, and I can't think of anyone better than you. So what do you say? How do I know you're telling me the truth? Oh, well, I suppose it's possible that I found a dozen bandits who were willing to give me their lives to give a passing stranger a false impression of life in the old Praven. Well, I guess you can't really know if my word is good, but I reckon you've learned by now that my money is good and there's another 100 dinars, or maybe a bit more, that's waiting for you if you do this last little favor. So what do you say? Ah, I'm a mercenary. At this point in my life, has basically brought me to the drudges. All I care about is money and power. And uh, this guy's providing at least the money point, so I'll lead his men. Splendid. It's been a long time since I stalked, uh, since I staked so much on a single throw of the dice, and frankly, I find it exhilarating. My men are ready to move onward. Are you ready? Not now. I will need to rest before I can fight again. Right. I can keep my men standing by. If you let this go too long, then I suppose I shall have to finish this affair without you. But I would be most pleased if you could part, be part of it as well. For now, take what time you need. All right. The reason I said not now is because I'm going to wrap this episode up. Looks like we're going to be leading Ulrich's men against the captain of the watch. No idea how that's going to go. I guess we'll find out next episode. Thank you guys so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a brand new series, and I really have no idea how this is going to go. So for a new series, if you're enjoying it, you know what to do. Lo dropping them likes is really, really, really uh, appreciative. And come back tomorrow because I'll definitely have at least another couple days worth of episodes recorded. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.